Hello friends, welcome to this Tuesday morning edition of Mid-Morning Manna, coming to you on behalf of North Harrison Baptist Church in Ramsey, Indiana. I hope that you will stay tuned and that you will share this, me this message with others. By the way, if you're a member of North Harrison Baptist Church and on the members page, then you can't share it. So you would have to go to Brother Lonnie, B-R-O-L-O-N-N-I-E, or you would have to go to just the regular North Harrison Baptist Church page. Uh, the, the, the ability to share is not given on that, uh, on the members, on the private members page. So anyway, just a little word there of help because I've had some folks say I tried to share it, but there's no share button, that sort of thing. It, it, we're talking this week about the power of your personal testimony. I'm talking to Christians now. You can make a big difference for God. You can have a powerful influence for God by using what God has done for you. It's your personal testimony. It's not my testimony. It's not somebody else's testimony. It's not what God did for D.L. Moody or Charles Spurgeon or somebody. Oh, it's always good to hear their testimonies, but what did God do for you? And as you talk to others, sharing that has more power than just about anything you can do. Matter of fact, I can only think one thing you could share with them that would have more power, and that's just sharing the plan of salvation verse by verse from the scripture. But second to that, and second only, uh, is, and, and, and there's no runner-up to second place, is your personal testimony. And our scripture verse for this week, we read down through verse number 15 of chapter 3 of 1 Peter, but verse 15 is the verse. Listen to what it says. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So God said, I want you to be able to share what I have done for you. Now, get that in your heart. Get that in your mind. Why don't you just decide right now, as a Christian, I'm not going to live below my privileges. I'm not going to live below my potential. I'm not going to be live below my instructions, what I've been instructed to do. I'm going to share my faith in Christ with others. I want them to see Jesus in me. Now, we talked about yesterday on Monday, we, we talked about sanctifying the, the Lord God in your heart. That is to set him apart there in your heart, sanctify. You say, well, where, where do I put him in my heart? You put him in first place. That's where you put him. Make him number one in your life. Put God first. Allow him to be God in your life. Don't try to sometimes you be a part-time God. I'm going to make my own decision, do my own thing. Nobody's going to tell me what to do, that kind of thing. Let God be God. And then you say, well, how can I find out what God wants? By spending time in this blessed old book, by being faithful to God's house, hearing the preaching and teaching of the word of God, by giving yourself to reading and studying the Bible, and then by sharing what you hear and what you learn and what God does for you and giving your testimony of salvation. Now, I said it yesterday. If you don't have a testimony of salvation, then please message me on, uh, on Facebook. Go to Facebook Messenger, message me, and just say, I need more information about this thing of being saved. And I'll be more than happy to get the information to you. And you can read it for yourself and settle this matter once and for all, forever. Get your name written down in heaven. No beyond a shadow of a doubt you're saved. You can have a testimony. Then you can share that testimony with others. So set God apart in your heart. Give him the number one place. And then we talked a little bit yesterday also about always being ready uh, the Apostle Paul gave his testimony when he was on trial and in other places, in uh, two very significant places, is in the book of Acts chapter 22, and then again in Acts chapter 26. You ought to jot those two chapters down, go back and read how Paul used his personal testimony to try to witness to some of 
the people who were very high in government, they were high government officials. And Paul was not the least bit shy about telling them how he met Christ and, and that, that sort of thing. So always be ready. I said later on this week, and I am going to do this, I'm going to share with you how my wife, Nancy, how Nancy got saved. I'm going to share with you how I got saved. I'm telling you to share your testimony. I want to share our testimony as well. But today, I want you to think of this other little phrase. He said, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Always be ready to give an answer. Notice that. Let me read it specific, exactly like it's written here in 1 Peter 3.15. He said, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you. If, if your life, your lifestyle, your conversation has raised questions in a person's heart and life about what makes you different, what, 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 why are you who you are, and how did you get saved, and why do you talk about the Lord, and, and why do you love the Lord, and why do you go to church all the time, and why do you give your money, and why do you do all the things you do for God? Why, why do you do that? Why do you teach a Sunday school class? Uh, why do you try to uh, pick up boys and girls and bring them to Sunday school and church to hear the Word of God? Why do you do this thing? And the, I want to tell you, the lost world is looking at Christians, and they just can't, don't understand it. They've got questions in the their mind. And so you ought to be ready to give an answer. Don't underestimate the power of your personal testimony. Don't underestimate it. Listen to what the Bible says in Psalm number 107 and verses 1 and 2. He said this, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. And then listen to this, verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. God wants you to speak up. He wants you to say so. You ought to be a say-so Christian, giving an answer and, and giving your testimony and telling folks how you received Christ. And, and, and be ready at all times, always ready. Be ready always, he said. Let God do a work in your heart and in your life. Now, we're going to talk about a little bit more about these things uh, in the last part of this week. And I'm going to give those testimonies that I've been talking about. I think it'll be a blessing to you. I, I hope it'll be a help to you. And in our soul winning class that we have, that's a perennial class, we have we have a group that go through and then we start over again. And uh, Brother Andy Boyd teaches that uh, during the Sunday school hour at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. And uh, if you uh, want to enroll in that class, you let us know. We'll let you know when the next one is starting. But here's the thing. Yeah, one of the things he tells them is to write out their testimony. Learn to give your testimony. Boy, that's an important part of that class. It's an important part of the, of the class members' lives. And God wants to use us, those of us who are saved, he wants to use us. No, it's not, okay, I found the Lord as my Savior, so I'm going to bottle it up and hide it over here so I won't lose it. My friends, you can't lose it. If you're saved, you're saved. If you've been born again into the family of God, you belong to him. And now he wants to use you to help someone else come to the Savior. Will you let him do it? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we can have a testimony. Lord, there may be many people listening and watching right now who really don't know that they have a testimony. They, 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 don't, they don't remember a time where they've received Christ. They just think that they're a Christian because they attend church or because they grew up in a Christian home. But Lord, they need to have that personal testimony of salvation. I pray you'd help them to realize that and that if they don't have it, they need to get it and they need to do it the only way that you can by putting their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, admitting their sins, knowing that they don't deserve it, but by faith, believing on him and receiving him. And Father, we'll give you the praise for it. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Could it be that up in heaven, God is sitting on his throne, anticipating another sinner will soon become his own? 
Years of wasted living and years of toil and strife are just about to be over as he receives the gift of life. Go sound the horn, strike up the choir, a sinner is saved, saved from the fire. Receive my son, all heavens rejoicing, that's the value of one. The Holy Spirit has been working to soften up their hearts. All he needs is a willing servant to simply do his part. Can you imagine up in heaven? The joy will be that day as a sinner bows his head to pray. Can't you hear the Father say, Go sound the horn, strike up the choir. A sinner is saved, saved from the fire. No more in darkness, he's received by sun. All heavens rejoice. That's the value of one. Start construction on his mansion there on Hallelujah Street. He doesn't know yet that it's waiting when it's saved. the vibe.